This is Untuck Friday. Chloe's not going to be here this whole time. I hope you guys are um, doing well. So Hagana wrote in the description Yin Yoga. So this is actually um, what we call Untuck. And it's a sort of combo restorative Yin class. It's very passive, very feel good. Um, but for those of you who need movement to sort of get out of your head, this might not be the class for you. This is a very passive class, a very meditative yoga practice. Um, so if you're looking for something more active, this might not um, be the best thing for you. But if you want something that's very grounding, um, that will help you relieve stress, it's lovely. Um, so we're not going to have Chloe here the whole time. She is. She's trying to get me to play wet sock with her. It's her favorite game. Um, but if you guys are here, go ahead, uh, comment, let me know what feels tight, what feels tense, how you're feeling mentally, if you don't mind sharing. Um, I know, <laughs> I know that, I know that Chloe's a monster. Um, I know that I am feeling, um, I don't know, just, just kind of hopeless, like things feel really bleak. Um, and I'm healthy and my family's healthy. Um, so Chloe, 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 daddy's going to have to take you upstairs. Um, so if you guys are feeling any certain way mentally, feel free. If you're comfortable, I know it's not sometimes comfortable. If you're comfortable sharing, feel free to share that. But let me know also when your body feels tight and tense and we can work on that stuff as well. Um, for class today, you're going to need a couple of blankets, so or pillows. If you have pillows, that's fine too. But I have three blankets here. These are actually from the Point Bree Studio. Um, we took them all home to wash them, and then we never reopened. So I got like 30 blankets in my basement. Um, so I have three sort of thin blankets here. Um, but if you have blankets that are thicker, that's fine too. Um, also, I would grab yoga blocks if you have them. Grab two. If you don't have yoga blocks, I would grab like paper towel rolls because you can always use that to support yourself. We might end up doing some hip opener, so um, it might be nice to have something to sort of steady yourself on, hold yourself, get some extra height with. Um, if you have a bolster, uh, Hagana was planning on doing class, but he is not. So if you have a bolster, you can grab a bolster, but obviously I know a lot of you will not have a bolster, though it's not a bad thing to have around. So if you you know, can get your hands on a bolster. That might be a cool thing to have um, during this time. So we'll get started in just a couple minutes. Again, this is a very passive yoga class. It's a sort of hodgepodge of yin and restorative. We'll talk about the difference in just a second, but um, I just want to see who's here and what you guys, um, how you guys are feeling right now. So let me see who's here. Comment and let me know. Am I alone? <laughs> oh, great. Okay. Hi, Hannah. Your mom's going to do class with you. Great. I think you guys will like this class. Hi, Jim. Jim, you're probably going to like this class too if you did that cardio bar class with Anne today. This is going to feel really good for your hips, really good for your mind. You're going to feel nice and relaxed afterwards. Guaranteed or your money back. <laughs> you're guaranteed to feel relax. Um, guys, I would suggest setting the mood for yourself. I've like lit a couple candles here. I've got some candles in the background. I don't know. It's small, but it like does make a difference. So, um, I don't know, spray some nice scent in the room or light a candle, get some of your favorite blankies and or a pillow. Um, and we'll get started here soon. Let me just put Chloe up because Hagana just left and Chloe is gonna try to, this is Chloe, guys, you can't see her. Can you see her? She's a tyrant dog. She is the alpha dog of our pack, um, but she will try to play wet sock with me the whole time. Okay, guys, sorry about that. I grabbed one more candle too, because you need candles if you're gonna do Friday night restorative in yin yoga. It's just a necessary thing. I'm kidding, you don't need to have candles, but I will say it's, um, it's nice. 
Okay, guys, so if you're just joining, this is, um, it's what we call untuck. It is a hodgepodge of restorative and yin yoga. Both are um, very slow, longer holds, more meditative practices. So if you're looking for a lot of movement, this might not be the class for you. Join us tomorrow um, or watch any of the other videos from this week. And <laughs> load is coming through the gate. And you're going to need two yoga blocks if you have them or something just of this shape. So two paper towels, two books, um, make sure they're hardcover though. I actually like using um, like the Lysol wipe containers. Those are a nice height too. You need a couple of blankets. Um, I have three or four here. These are from our Point Breeze studio. They got washed, but now they are, Bodhi's gonna try to get them dirty. Um, but you can also grab a couple of pillows. You can grab a, um, a one thin blanket at least, because we will roll it up at some point. So if you only have comforters, we will make it work. But, oh Bodhi, daddy, Bodhi's in here. Um, and, and that's all you need. You need your soft surface. So let me know if you're here and what feels tight, what feels tense in your body, um, and we can work through. Hey, no, buddy. Hey, Hagana, can you come get buddy, please? Buddy, come on. Buddy. Come on. Move. Buddy. This way. Go to daddy. Buddy. Come on. Go to daddy. Keep him in there, Hagana, because he's trying to. Um, go, 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 go. He's trying to um, hump me, <laughs> which is that's just the way life goes. Okay, guys, so let me know. Hi, Deepika. Oh, hi, Bridget. Yes, I've been looking forward to this class all week, too. Um, <laughs> where are my candles? Okay, so Deepika, here's one candle. It's very low, and you can't really see it because of this. But then I've got a couple other ones here. I've got a couple going in the back. We'll get started here in just a second, guys. Is there anything... <laughs> Jim says, save my body, please. Um, is there anything you guys are, where you guys are feeling tense or tight? Um, I'll share my own feelings here. I feel like my hips, my inner thighs, my low back, my shoulders, my neck, all those things. So if you agree, let me know. Oh, also my chest, just from sitting. That's what I wanted to focus on, kind of undoing a lot of the sitting we've been doing and getting out tension where at least in my body I usually hold my tension so my hips um my traps things like that so we'll get started here in just a minute I want to give just a couple more seconds for people to join um for those of you who are new to this practice this is a more meditative practice it's um you'll feel great afterwards but it is sort of a hodgepodge of yin and restorative yoga. What are the differences? So in a vinyasa class, that's like your more traditional active yoga class, you're moving with your breath. Um, so in our yin practice and in our um, restorative practice, we're just, we're engaging in longer passive holds and that's gonna help your body recover. It's more about like joint mobility and recovery um, rather than like muscular ability. So the difference between yin and restorative, back to my original question, in yin, we, we welcome a little bit of discomfort. So you'll find a stretch that feels, ee, you're like, oh, it's what I call the happy place. It doesn't quite feel good, but it doesn't feel bad. So you're at a point where you can still relax into the pose, but you're not, um, you're not certainly like pushing your body to a, to a limit. It's just like a, a little happy spot where you feel it, but it's not uncomfortable. Um, in, restore, in restorative yoga, we wanna be completely supported. So we don't want anything to feel uncomfortable. Um, so as I talk you through, I'll talk you through sort of where you should be feeling things and whether things should feel maybe just a little bit uncomfortable or whether they should feel really good. Um, so I'll talk you through that. Okay. I think it's time. Um, just, I wanted to share, I got a really um, personal email, I'm gonna try not to get emotional, um, from one of our clients at Tuck right before this class. And, um, and she was just saying that she really loves Tuck and appreciates it because she's, um, uh, it's really helped her heal from trauma. 
And um, that's one of the things that, I mean, I, aside from just being so incredibly happy that we were able to help in any way um, someone heal from trauma, but just a note that this practice has helped lots of folks heal from trauma. Um, me personally, um, lots of our clients. So if, if, it, if this it is something that resonates with you or you feel really nice afterwards, um, you're not alone. This can, it helps you feel good in your body. It helps you feel like you own your body. And for some people, they felt like they've lost that connection for you know a whole number of reasons. Um, so I hope that you guys like this class and um, I hope that you get something out of it. Um, okay, yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start on our tummies. So you guys can grab your blankie and just have your blankie to the right side of your mat. We're going to go ahead and get down onto our tummies and come into half frog. So this is a nice hip release. We're going to come down all the way onto our tummies and then bring your forearms down. So you're gonna create a nice little pillow with your forearms, rest your forehead down. And then you're gonna send your right knee, Carly's kind of blocking my blankies, but you're gonna send your right knee outside of your right hip and place that blankie underneath your right knee so it just feels soft. And then you'll come back down here and rest in this position, allowing the right hip to get nice and heavy. We're going to start here just breathing deeply into our belly. So as you inhale, I want you to feel your belly press against the floor. And as you exhale, draw the exhale out of the belly, feel the belly pull away from the floor. Inhale, feel it press, feel it expand, belly only. Exhale, slowly draw that breath back out out through your nose, feeling the belly pull away from the floor. Inhale, feel the belly expand. Exhale, feel the belly draw back in, push the air out of the nose. Just a few more breaths here, guys, just like this. And now, as you take these breaths, I want you to notice the sort of secondary tertiary effects on the body. As you inhale, notice the expansion. And as you exhale, try to soften into that space. Just try to like melt one little part of your body. Maybe it's your hips, maybe your jaw. Inhale. Draw the breath in, feel the belly press. Exhale, release, soften. Inhale. Exhale. Take one more round of breath, just like this, guys. Inhale. And exhale. And now staying down here, I want you guys to start to let that breath sort of fade into the background. So just let your breath be effortless, soft, easy. Each time you inhale, almost let it just kind of push the background. And now each time we exhale, I want you guys to focus on a part of the body. We'll take a quick journey through our body and find softness in every part. So I want you to first, as you exhale, recognize the left foot. Allow the top of the foot to rest, not to press. Let your knee get heavy on the left side. The back of the knee can soften. Let the quad release and let your left hip draw closer to the floor. Now allow that softness to move, to wrap to the right hip. The 
hip can relax, the seat can release. Allow your inner thigh on the right side to soften so that you're not resisting against the floor. So you're just relaxing here. The knee gets heavy, the outer thigh releases. Maybe you can pull that knee up just a little bit so you get a, a little additional stretch through the inner thigh. Let your calf release on the right side, your ankle. The inner edge of your right foot can soften. Now, each time you exhale, just imagine that whole lower body getting nice and heavy, getting melty. Soften into your low back. Walk up the spine and relax the muscles that surround the spine, especially that spot right in between your shoulder blades. Allow the back of the neck to relax, the sides of the neck. Let your shoulders get heavy. The, the shoulders should roll forward. Let the chest relaxes. The triceps and the biceps get heavy. Your forearms are resting here. Try not to press against the floor. Just let them softly melt into the floor. Forehead soft. Jaw soft. Teeth are unclenched. Let your eyelids, your temples, your forehead release. We'll enjoy one final breath here in this half ball. Oh. Okay guys, when you're ready, slowly start to pull your forehead up away from your forearms. Send your left arm out. We're gonna open through the shoulder, through the chest. So your left arm is going to go out to a T here. You can always grab a blankie and place it underneath your left arm. But I want your palm facing down. We're going to gently roll over on towards that left arm and allow your left ear to melt down onto the ground. You're drawing your right foot back behind you and just opening and releasing as you allow your chest, your shoulders to get heavy. Notice that soft stretch in the front of your um, left shoulder, in your chest, on the left side. Now guys, this is a yin pose, so it's not completely comfortable. So for some people, this is a really um, agitating pose. So again, try to come back to your breath. Try to just soften with each exhale and find that spot that feels just a little bit uncomfortable. If it's too much, you roll out of it a little bit. So you never want to get to a point where you can't fully just be in the pose. You don't want to feel antsy here. Mm, such a good release. And in my own yin and restorative practice, I like to take those journeys through my body in every pose. So here, I'm still focused on that left leg being soft. Even though my right foot is pressing down onto the mat, I want to do it with only the energy that's required. So trying to let go of all anything that's unnecessary here. Now guys, if this feels like you're not getting enough of a stretch, like there's not even a little bit of discomfort, you can make this a little more intense by drawing your right or your left arm, pardon me, into a 90 degree angle and then rolling back. So again, you want just a little bit of discomfort. It should be your happy place, not your uncomfortable place. But maybe that feels a little bit better for you if you're super flexy and whatnot. Take just one more breath here, guys. And when you're ready, slowly roll that right shoulder down. Peel the right hip down. Take it slow. Come back to center. And we're going to draw our forearms out in front of us. Come into a sphinx pose. 
one of my favorite poses. So you can either do this with a yoga block or your paper towel. I want you to bring your feet as wide as your mat. And I want you to press the tops of the toes down here just to start. But I want you to feel your butt cheeks relax. And then you can take that yoga block and place it like right underneath your ribs and draw your elbows out underneath your shoulders and come into this supported sphinx pose. So if this compression, there's gonna be a little compression in your low spine. If that doesn't feel good for you, you can take those elbows out further. You can even come down here and just rest on your forearms like we did earlier. That's still gonna bring some compression into the low spine. So whatever feels nice for your body, for your back. So you can take those paper towel rolls underneath your ribs, you can be here. And then we'll kind of talk into it a little bit more or you don't need to use anything. It doesn't have to be supported. It can just be like this. Okay, so we're pr still pressing the tops of those pinkies into the ground. But I want you guys to start to let the seat soften so that the blood starts to flow to your low back. So you'll feel like a little compression, but it's not uncomfortable. I kind of like sometimes too here to drop my forehead down onto a block, onto whatever I've got, a little box, my little cleaning wipes, that can feel nice too. You're still getting that compression in the low back, but it's a nice way for your head and neck to soften and release. So each time you exhale here, guys, focus on letting the seat relax. And try to monitor whether you can feel your low back releasing and the blood flowing. Nice deep inhales, nice deep exhales. Breath is effortless. Once you're in there, it like feels really good, right? It's hard for me to know how you guys are feeling, but I'm feeling really good. This feels lovely. You can always take those feet a little bit wider. You can always come out a little bit if that feels better for your back. It shouldn't feel uncomfortable, just a little bit like something's there. And I like to imagine in my, in, um, my yin and restorative practices, I like to imagine like, a little valve of tension. And each time I soften in that that little valve is releasing, a little more tension is going away. I don't know if that analogy makes sense, but I like to think of my low back and my seat here as controlling that valve. And each time I find a little more softness, the softness can release to other parts of my body. Take one more breath here. When you're ready, taking your time, move slowly, slowly, slowly. Walk those elbows out. You might feel a little sticky. That's okay. That's normal. You're going to draw your forearms back down. And then you can take any movements here that feel good. Sometimes it can feel good to kind of reach your wipe or the shin as you release your forehead down. It can feel good to just cross at the ankles. Maybe take those knees a little wider. It can feel good just to bring your knees in a little closer. And now when you're ready, guys, take your time. There's no rush. This is your practice, your body, your movement. You slide that blinky over to the left side and we'll come into half frog. So you'll send that left knee up. Ugh. Try to bring it to a spot where it's close to in line with your hip, but if that doesn't feel good and you feel your hip really hiking up, you take that knee a little lower. Think about drawing your ankle in line with your knee and the inner edge of your left foot is close to the mat, to the floor. You can come back down here and start to focus on softening through the outer hip 
on the left side, the inner thigh on the left side. With each exhale, think about letting that left knee get even heavier. Letting gravity start to take over here. Gravity can do the work. We'll take another journey here through our bodies, starting on that left foot. Let the inner edge of your left foot rest all the five toes on the left side and soften. Big toe mountain release, the arch of your foot relaxes, the ankle softens. Let that softness migrate up to the calf, the inner knee, the outer knee. Let the knee get heavy and soft as the inner thigh relaxes. And maybe your left hip is a little closer to the floor. No force there, just let it, let gravity take over and pull it down. Once you feel your left hip get heavy, try to take that softness and let it wrap into your left seat, into the low back, those deeper hip muscles. And then let it shift to the right side. Right seat gets heavy, right hip draws closer to the ground. Let your right quad release. Try not to press that leg down, but just let it rest softly. Right knee softens, back and knee softens. Right calf and ankle can release. Now release your right foot, let it feel soft and easy. Each time you exhale, release that balance. The lower body gets a little heavier, a little more supportive. Maybe you find that you can slide that left knee up just a hair. It doesn't have to be much. Remember, you don't want to be uncomfortable. Maybe just a little bit of discomfort. And then let that softness from the low body start to migrate up to the low spine, the low back, the side body. I'm going to come back down. The muscles around the ribs can soften. Your chest can release. The arms can soften. Elbows can rest heavy. Let your palms relax and the fingers soften. All the knuckles. Fingers just fall where they fall. The jaw releases the temples. The tongue can move away from the roof of the mouth. Each exhale, you draw more softness in. You let it come. And again, guys, if you get uncomfortable during this practice, your mind starts to wander, that's totally normal. Don't judge yourself, don't get frustrated, don't think, oh, I'm bad at this. It takes time to learn to be still, to be okay with being still. It's just like anything else, it's a practice. Some days are better than others, so don't get frustrated with yourself or think you can't do it. It's just the way it is. Take one more breath here. We'll come into that juicy shoulder, chest up on the other side. Oh, when you're ready, start to slowly push yourself up. Take your time. You can keep your knee just like this, but maybe draw that shin in a little bit. You're going to use your blankie underneath your right hand, palm faces down, and then you start to press yourself over onto your right side. You can rest your head down on your mat. If that doesn't work for you, you can place a block under there or just grab something to prop your head up allowing the chest and the shoulder to release here on the right side. My left foot's planted down. And even though I'm kind of holding myself up here with my left um, foot, I want you to take out any sort of unnecessary energy, just enough 
just keep whatever you need to hold yourself up, but no more. Start to find more softness in the chest, in the shoulder. This is such a good one, guys, if you've been sitting a lot, driving, if you've been working on your computer, running, basically if you're a human, feel free to soften and roll out a little bit if you need to. If you'd like a little bit more, if you find that the stretch isn't enough, you can roll out a bit, draw your right arm into that 90 degree angle like a goal post, and then roll back. Mm. We're going to get into the hips after this. Enjoy just one more breath here, guys. Whenever you're ready, put your left hand back down. Slowly roll yourself back to center. Press your hands under you guys. Take your time. Make your way back into your child's pose. I like to draw a blank underneath my knees here. That feels good for me. You can draw your knees a little closer together here. If you want an additional release for your upper back, you can take your block or your book or whatever you've got, drop your forehead down and then take your arms behind you, the palms face up and the shoulders round forward. If you'd like, you can also take child's pose with your knees a little wider if you want more release for your hips and you want your low back to soften. You can also take your arms long here, rest your forehead down, or create a nice little pillow for yourself. I like the little pillow variation. Be kind to yourself. Find a child pose that feels good for you and that works for your body. And then start to invite that softness back in. In my child's pose, I always notice that I'm pressing the tops of my feet and my shins down into the mat. In our, in this practice, we want to let that go. We want to just let our shins and our feet relax here. Our knees can get soft. You don't need to force your hips towards your heels. The hips go where they go. Let gravity take over and don't put any pressure on yourself. Let your chest and your forehead get heavy. The jaw can release, the teeth can unclench. And each time you exhale, guys, think about the outer seat and the low back. Just try to invite a little more softness in. Keep the breath easy, soft, effortless. Okay, guys, we'll take one more breath here. Enjoying, savoring. And when you're ready, if you have your arms back behind you, mm, slowly start to draw yourself forward. If your arms are long, start to pull them in. Now this next stretch can be um, intense. It's a traditional yin pose. It's called dragon lunge. So we're going to want our blocks or our paper towels. I like to have the blankie underneath my back knee. Um, you guys can, if you have super soft mats, you don't need that, but I think it's nice. Have your blocks and whatnot close by. This pose always makes me sweat, <laughs> so I'm going to take off my sweater. Um, okay guys, so you're going to come onto your knees on that blankie if you've got it. 
draw your right foot forward and then scoop that left knee back. So you're on the top of the left thigh here. You're not on your knee. And now guys, if you were like really struggling to get that foot forward, that's okay. That's very normal. Kind of help yourself, like push that foot forward. And then you want your ankle to be underneath your knee. So you don't want to be like here where your knee's pressing forward and the heel's coming off the ground. You want to be here. Okay, so then you've got your blocks here. And I want you guys to start just right here. You're going to feel an intense sensation, the left hip flexor. And I want you to just intensify that sensation just a hair by squeezing into your left butt cheek. Oh, and each time you exhale, keep your breath soft and easy. Remember, if it's uncomfortable and you lose your breath, you notice that your breath is becoming more full of effort, that's when you kind of ease off. So you can kind of draw those hips back. But if you find that your breath still feels effortless, that's just like my gauge for how the pose should feel. Um, the breath is kind of always your barometer. Then you can start to sink down into that left hip. Each exhale, you invite a little more softness in. A little more softness here. A little more softness in your quad and a lot more softness in your shoulders. So the tendency for me, at least, I always bring my shoulders up here because this feels unpleasant and this feels unpleasant. So I'm here and I'm clenching my jaw. Try to find softness in those areas that aren't stretching. And then find that valve again. A little more soft. This pose is great, again, if you've been sitting a lot, if you walk, run. Again, if you're a human, this gets really tight a lot and it can cause low back pain. So for those of you, if you find that the past few weeks you've been having low back trouble, I've been, my low back feels terrible lately. Um, this pose can help, even if it's just a couple minutes before bed, and you can do this on your bed. I do this on my bed all the time. Okay, now guys, feel free to stay here. This is, a, this is a lot, this is an intense pose. And remember, you wanna find that happy spot where it's not too much, not too little. So this might be it. This would probably be it for me on a normal day. But just so I can show you other variations that might work for you. So for those of you who want a little bit more and who also wanna work into the outer hip on this right side, I want you to start to heel toe your right foot out. So it's heel toeing out towards the side of your mat. You're gonna really feel sensation in your right inner thigh and a deeper sensation in that left hip. And now maybe you can start to let that right knee splay out away from your shoulder. So again, you're gonna feel a deeper sensation through the inner thigh on the right side and through your outer seat. Now guys, that might be enough. In a vinyasa class, we'd be really like flexing this outer foot. I want you to find a little flex there, but just enough. So it's not like overwhelming, it's just enough. Then maybe you can start to come down onto your forearms. Oh, and then each time you exhale, the dynamic here is the right knee splaying out, that left hip's dropping closer to the floor. So you're getting that release through your left hip flexor while simultaneously opening through the inner thigh on the right side and through your outer hip. So each time you exhale, guys, the right knee splays out, that left hip drops down. Right knee splays out, left hip drops down. And then find softness in the shoulders, especially if you've come down to your forearms. It can be really easy to get tight and tense here.
think. Now guys, if you feel good, I want you to start to press into your hand, start to ground through the hand and draw yourself back up if you're down that way. And then I want you to heel toe that right foot across the body. So you're gonna shift your hips back and then draw that right knee down, coming into sleeping swan. So this is our yin variation of pigeon. So ordinarily in a vinyasa class, you'd be trying to keep this really active, flex through the foot, draw the shin parallel, pull right hip back, left hip down as you drop. Here, we're keeping a sharp angle. Our right knee is behind our right wrist. Our left ankle's in line with our left hip. And if you find that your right hip's propped up, you can shove a blanket underneath there or your block if you've got it, your paper towel roll, and then you're slowly gonna take your time, drop your chest, your forehead down. In this variation, I like to take the block oh, and place it underneath my forehead here. So if you've got paper towels, if you've got a box, if you, whatever you've got, you can drop your forehead down. If that doesn't work, you can create a little cradle for your chin like this, or you can come all the way down. And now this pose can feel, the discomfort can feel a little overwhelming sometimes. So find just one part of your body that feels good. Maybe it's your hands, your jaw, maybe that left foot in the back there. Focus on that part of your body and focus on the good. Let that sort of discomfort almost fade to the background. It's just like anything else. If you focus on the good, you'll see the good. If you focus on the negative, you'll see the negative. So even though this pose can be comfortable, it's also very uh, binary. You either love it or you hate it. But I'm, tr I'm specifically talking to those of you who hate it. Try to find that spot in your body that feels good. And let that be your focus. We'll hold this for one more breath, guys. My favorite pose, it's so good. When you're ready, guys, take your time. If you're on your forearms, slowly start to press yourself up. If you've got that black or paper towel or blankie wedged underneath your right seat, you can move it out of the way and then slowly roll onto the outer right hip. Slide your left leg forward. Okay, this is my favorite low back stretch. Guys, we're just doing all my favorite poses today. Um, so this is my favorite low back stretch. I'm gonna sit up on my blanket. That feels better for me. You're going to grab your paper towel roll or whatever you've got your block place it outside that left um, shin and guys if you find that your right knee is really high up like this you can draw um, another blankie underneath your seat or you can also roll up your blankie and just kind of prop your knee up that's nice okay so i want you guys to get that left leg super strong like feel if your quad engage like maybe kind of press down on your quad here and roll it back. Oh, that feels good. Okay, now holding that engagement, start to draw your left shoulder down towards that block. Sorry, I'm wearing a bad shirt. <laughs> you're like, my wife does butt stuff. Okay, so you're gonna take your left elbow down onto that block so that you start to feel this part of your low back release. So this is a muscle that gets really tight from sitting. So right here into your outer hip, we'll start to stretch. And then let that left thigh go. Let it get really soft as you support your head here and relax. Your left shoulder gets heavy and then maybe your right arm 
comes behind you. The tendency here is we have tight shoulders, right? We all do. Your elbow might be up high and it might not feel comfortable, then just drop it. Or you can just take it long and feel that length from your fingertip through that left hip so it feels nice and good right here. I describe it as like the muffin top stretch because that's where you should feel it. And you get there by letting that right knee get really nice and heavy. Okay, let it get melty here. So that's why that blankie can be nice. Oh, if you don't have any block or anything to rest on, you can also rest on your shin. Just don't put it on your knee. Don't put your elbow on your knee. And now let's enjoy it. Oh, it's such a good stretch, guys. You might have to play around with it and find your happy place. But then each exhale, find more softness. Invite it in. Just a few more breaths here. Each time you exhale, let that right knee get a little heavier. When you guys are ready, take your time with that right arm lifted, drop it down in front of you. Give yourself a little push to help yourself up. It's gonna feel a little sticky. It's normal. That's like, that stickiness is a normal sensation in this practice, so it's not, nothing's wrong. It's just normal. It can feel really nice to bend that left knee, kind of wiggle your knees out. Some people like to take them straight and wiggle. But just kind of tune in, listen to your body. What feels nice after that pose? Take any movements. Just keep them slow. And then when you're ready, guys, slowly slide yourself back into your child's pose. Take your blankie underneath your knee. Oh. Oh. And maybe take a different variation than what you took before. So if you had your elbows bent, arms at your side like a little turtle. Maybe you take your arms out long or create that little pillow or vice versa. Let your forehead melt down and just find softness here. Hopefully your dog's not blocking your child's pose like my dog. Invite the softness back into your shins, your knees, your inner thighs, your low back. Release your jaw, your cheeks. Allow the tongue to move away from the roof of the mouth and soften your eyelids and your temples. Let your forehead fully rest so the back of the neck is soft, the sides of the neck too. Mm. When you're ready, guys, if your arms are behind you, start to send them out in front of you. Press yourselves up. We have to do that dragon lunge on the other side. It's going to feel good, I promise, but the side might feel completely different. So just be ready for that. Take your blocks or your paper towels out in front of you. Oh, guys, I already feel so much better. I hope you guys feel better, too. When you're ready, send that left foot forward other knee your right knee is back behind you so you're on the other side now untuck your back toe and maybe wiggle that right knee back behind you so again guys you may need to give yourself a little help be nice to yourself support yourself and send that foot upward that's totally normal wiggle that knee back if you can soften your elbows even though you're holding yourself up here and start to ease into that right hip flexor. Again, guys, this side might feel really different. You might feel tighter. It might feel a little more uncomfortable. So maybe you have to ease off of it. Maybe you feel more open. You can wiggle back a bit more 
and then start to squeeze into your right seat. Find that deeper release through your hip flexor as you soften your shoulders away from your ears. Let your neck get long. And the breath, let it be soft, easy. Find that happy spot in your hips where you feel it, where it's not overwhelming, it's not distracting. Mm. Stay firmly rooted here through the inner edge of that left foot. So we're not quite letting our left knee splay out yet. That'll come real soon though, so just wait for it. Mm. Find your bow, your right hip. Now, why do we hold these poses for so long in this practice? Everybody always asks that. They're like, why do we have to go through this for so long? A, there's mental benefit. B, the point here is it's recovery and it's flexibility in your joints, not your muscles. So we're letting the blood flow to the fascia, the joints, the connective tissue, rather than engaging our muscles and the blood flows to the muscles. It just takes time to get the muscles to release. Now guys, you can feel free to stay here. If this feels like your happy spot for today and you're like, oh, it feels good. Also, it feels uncomfortable a little bit. You can feel free to stay here if you'd like to work into the outer seat, the inner thigh on the left side. You can start to heel toe that left foot out. Turn the toe out slightly towards like 10 o'clock or so. Start to let that knee splay out away from the shoulder. The dynamic here, knee splays out more room to drop that right hip. And now maybe if you feel good, you start to come down onto your forearms. Maybe you start to roll onto the outer edge of your left foot. And you soften through your shoulders, even though you're holding yourself up here. Remember, the more the left knee splays out, the more room for your right hip to drop. And you want just a little bit of flexion in that left foot, left ankle. So not like really tensing, just a little bit. Right leg get nice and heavy here, guys. And when you're ready, oh, I could live here. <laughs> when you're ready, take your time. If you're on your forearms, you slowly start to lift yourself up and then ground through that left foot. You can send your hips back a little. It's going to feel a little sticky. That's normal. You're going to heel to that left foot across the plane of your body and then come into that sharp sleeping swan. So think pigeon, but sharp angle. Your left knee is just outside the plane of your hip, just right behind your left wrist. Your right ankle's right next to your, um, or sorry, your left ankle's right next to your right hip. Now, guys, you can feel free, grab your little paper towel roll, send it underneath your butt and then take your time slowly, come down. Maybe you rest your forehead on your block. Maybe you allow your palms to face the ceiling. Sometimes I like to do that and think about good things. Think about something that's positive. Maybe someone in your life that you love, maybe a pet that you love. 
Maybe just a good feeling in your life, like drinking a warm cup of coffee or being cozy in your bed. And just think about those good things here with your palms facing up. Think about inviting more of that good stuff in. As you let the tension, the heaviness, the tension leave your hips and the heaviness can come right in. a few more breaths here guys a few more moments savor it if this pose is uncomfortable for you focus on the good find one part of your body that feels good and what does comfort feel good right now guys mm. start to walk your hands in take your time lift yourself back up oh move super slowly guys start to draw that block with a paper towel blankie whatever you've got underneath your left hip you can roll over slide your right leg long it's normal for that to be a little sticky if you need any other movements before we move into this take them Oh, I feel so good. <laughs> I haven't felt this good in a long time. I hope you guys feel good too. Okay, take your blanket underneath your left knee. I'm sitting up on my blanket. If you find that that left knee is super high, maybe sit on more blankets or you can always sit on your book or your block. That can be helpful too. Go ahead, get a nice strong right leg. So get really engaged here. Maybe press your hand down into your quad and kind of roll that thigh like back. Yeah. So almost like your pinky toe pulls closer to the floor. Beautiful. Now from here, sort of send that right shoulder down. So my block is just outside my shin. If you don't have a, a block or a book, you can take your elbow right on like the muscle that's on your shin. So you're not on your bone, but that muscle is just to the right of it, not on your knee. And then maybe you support your head here. Oh, now let your leg go. Let it get soft and start to find that release in the low back here on the left side. It's gonna feel really good. You might have to play around with it. Let your left knee get super heavy and that'll intensify that sensation. You can also take your left elbow behind you. Just let that left arm be heavy. Let the weight of the elbow Intensify that stretch, more length between your left hip and your left elbow. If that doesn't feel good or you find that your elbow's like uncomfortable, you can just reach your arm long here. You can also just drop the arm down. Mm. Let that right thigh get super heavy, guys, and let your left knee get heavy. Those are your valves here. A little more softness. Enjoy one more breath here, guys. Mm. 
and you're going to take your time, move super slow, draw that left arm down, if it's lifted, start to send yourself up. It's normal for that side to feel a little sticky. It's normal. If it feels good, maybe you start to bend through that right knee. You can kind of butterfly your legs out. Maybe you keep them straight and bend here. Oh, class is almost over. I just want to do full frog. We did all that prep with half frog. Then I'll give you guys a good Shavasana. So for full frog, oh, we really have to do this, don't we? Okay, so this is probably the most uncomfortable pose we're going to do all day, but we're saving it for last. So I like to roll up my blankies like doubly here. And you want to keep your blankies on your mat and they're going to be nice and wide like this. That may be a little, I may be ambitious right there. For me, this might be my, where I need to go. You're going to grab your blocks or your paper towel rolls, have them close by. And I want you guys to draw your knees onto your blankies. So you're coming into what feels like the full splits. Like you're like, oh yes, but your knees are bent. So I want you guys to find a place for your knees and for your blankies where it feels like, oh, that's a little uncomfortable. It's not overwhelming, but a little uncomfortable. And then I want you to send your shins in line with your knees. So your feet aren't together. Your feet are wide. The inner edges of the feet are facing the floor. Okay. And now try not to push your hips forward or back. Keep those hips right in line with your knees. So you, you might, if you feel like you're really coming down low here, your hips might be too forward or they might be a little too far back. So play with that and shift yourself forward and back until you find that spot where you're like, oh yeah, that's, that's it. And then maybe you draw your forearms down onto your blocks, to your paper towels, to your books, whatever you've got. And this is raw. This is what we hold. And this is where we try to invite softness into our inner thighs, into our hips. So you may find that you feel real flexy here. And if that's the case, just be mindful that you're not overdoing it. So maybe just bring a little bit of engagement into your inner thighs so you're not just splaying out wide. If you feel like me and you're like, oh, this feels really uncomfortable, you might have to walk out a little bit. You know, listen to your body and find that happy spot, that spot where you feel it, but it's not terrible. Oh. And then maybe focus on one thing that's good. Maybe your hands feel good. Maybe your feet feel good. Maybe your shoulders, your jaw. Maybe this feels good for your hips and you're like focused on it. That's fine too. Don't let me be a Debbie Downer for you. And start to invite that softness in. You'll notice your knees want to start to go out. As you invite the softness in, the valve releases and you're like, oh, my knees can go out. Your body's not going to let it hurt itself. So relax into it. Oh. Okay, guys, we have to do Shavasana. It's time. It might go over five minutes. That's okay. We have to go, go. But I want to give you guys a nice, good, long Shavasana to end this practice. Oh, so guys, when you're ready, take your time. Slowly start to push yourself up first with your hands. Take your time. Slide one knee in. Oh, then the other knee in. Oh. And it's going to feel sticky. That's normal. Take any movements that feel good. It can feel nice to straighten your legs. Some people like to rest on their heels. Oh, some people like to have a seat. Some people like a downward dog. Take any movements that feel nice for you. Eventually drop down to your butt and we're going to slide our feet forward. We're going to come into our last pose where we can take Shavasana or we can not. So I want you to find one of your blankies when you're ready. Take your time. There's no rush here, guys. You really don't have anywhere to be. Hagan is always like, you can't go over in classes. I feel like this is the one point in time in the world where I can. Um, 
but I don't, I also know you guys still have stuff to do. So you're going to roll your blankie up like a little noodle, but see how it's like a little longer here. This is just to provide support. So even if you have a comforter, that's fine. I want you to draw your feet together like this, and then you're going to take the blankie on top of your feet and wrap it down and under. So Carly, can you squeeze me, please? Yeah, you can see me. Yeah, she loves the blankies. So your soles of your feet come together and that blankie creates a hammock. So your knees are supported so it won't feel uncomfortable. And you're gonna make your way down to your back. Oh. I like to place one hand on my heart, one hand on my tummy. You might like to have your arms at your sides. If you find that with this hammock, even with this support, that you, it's too much for your inner thighs, like even for me right now, I'm like, eh. You can take your heels further away from your bottom. And if that doesn't feel good, just kick it away altogether and you can come onto your back. Just like this. Legs and arms straight. And this is where we're going to take Shavasana, guys. So I'm going to take you through one final journey through your body. So I want you to bring attention to the soles of your feet. Let the soles of the feet touch, but not press. Let the outer edges of the feet relax onto the floor. Let them like really melt. Your feet get super heavy. All 10 toes relax. The big toe mounds soften. And then soften your heels. Allow that space between the heel and the big toe mound, the arch of the foot, the outer edge of the foot. Let that entire space get soft and heavy. Let your ankles go. The muscles that surround your shins can get heavy and soft. The calf muscles back of the knees, the inner knees. As the knees get heavy, the inner thighs start to release. The front of the foot. And let that softness wrap to the back of the seat. Let it melt into the mat. Let the outer thighs soften. the whole lower body get nice and heavy, supported. Take your awareness to your little belly, let it be soft, let it go. As the low belly softens, the obliques can release the muscles that surround the ribs. Chest can soften. The upper arms can release the biceps, the triceps. Can get heavy, the elbows can soften. Let your forearms release and even your ribs can relax. your wrists soften, let the palms of the hands go. And let that softness spread outwards through all ten fingers. Fingers just fall open. And now let your whole upper body get heavy. Melt it. It's fully supported by your mat. Take your awareness to the back of the head. Let it rest heavy on your mat. Back of the neck soften, the sides of the neck release. As the sides 
Try to neck soften more. Like take that softness and let it move to your jaw. Out through your ears. Sweep down the head to the tongue, moves away from your top palate. And this is when your cheeks can relax, your eyelids can soften, your temples release, but the space between your eyebrows can relax. Let your forehead soften, moving like a statue. Enjoy your rest. Slowly to breath, your breath is deepening. Start to find those strong body feels in your neck. You notice the sound, the smell from the room. Appreciate those senses for just a moment sense of smell, your sense of touch. And when you're ready, slowly start to pull one knee in. Maybe manually help yourself pull the other knee in. You can kick your blankie off, straighten the legs. Inhale, reach your arms overhead. Let the low back pull away from the floor and then hug your knees into your chest. Roll over onto your right or your left side. You can rest your head on your blankie. Cradle your head in your arms. Take just one moment, more moment here. Enjoying this heaviness. Enjoying the sounds of my all my dogs here. <laughs> they get really excited when we practice yoga. And guys, before we end our practice today, I want you to just take one more moment here to think about something that you're grateful for. An experience, a feeling, a person, a pet. Let that sense of gratitude wash over you, make you warm. Maybe share that gratitude. If you thought of a person or a pet, tell that person. Give them that present. Or tell your pet. It's like a little present. Wrap it up and share it with them. And when you guys are ready, press yourself up into a cozy seat. We'll bring our hands to heart center, Anjali Mudra. Pressing our thumbs into our sternum. If that sounds hippy dippy to you and you want to keep your hands on your thighs, that's fine too. Press into the sternum and sort of seal in that sense of gratitude. Take an inhale here and an exhale. 
On your next inhale, draw the thumbs to the third eye space. Press into that space and lift the crown of the head up. Open the front of the throat, open the chest. And as you exhale, slowly bow. Bowing towards yourself, towards one, each, one another virtually. And slowly drawing yourself back up. Namaste, everyone. I hope you enjoyed uh, the practice. I hope you feel good. I hope you're still with me. Did I do that by myself? <laughs> I got this like, Callie, there was no one in the class. That's fine. I feel really good. If you have questions, please feel free to reach out. Um, I'm happy to answer questions. I know that um, Yen Restorative can be kind of an interesting practice, but I um, hope you enjoyed the Friday night at the Kins with all the dogs, and I hope you guys feel good. Bye.